Hey everyone, today is October 5th, 2024. Some of the trees are still green, some of them are pretty, all dropping their leaves. We're walking through the woods right now because I got so many comments about a short video I uploaded of this really interesting rock. I kind of described it as looking like a brain. It has a lot of cool grooves. One side of it's covered in moss. It was extremely heavy. I carried it a couple hundred feet and it was just too heavy. So I abandoned it. All the comments were telling me I got to go back and get it. It looks like a petrified piece of tree that was probably out there millions of years. And it kind of turned into a piece of metal. It's heavier than the average rock. So we're going back today to try to get it out of there. We have some ratchet straps, we have a saw. We're gonna find a nice piece of wood and the idea of using like a stretcher was a good idea. We're gonna distribute the weight evenly and try to get this, what I think is 60 or more pound rock out of the woods. So I'm using Google Maps along with this hiking trail that's nearby. It seems a lot easier than taking the rock up the riverbed, which was kind of dangerous, it was so heavy. Now somewhere around here, I think I'm gonna have to start bushwhacking to the river because we're not exactly parallel to it anymore. Listen carefully. There's so many geese out there. I love the crunchy sound of leaves, the sound of the leaves falling out of all the trees. Are they about to fly over us? Oh, I can see some if we zoom in. It's a lot of them. I can still hear the geese. I've never seen so many in one group migrating. So here's the main trail, kind of going the wrong direction. But now we have the smaller trail, which is going in the right direction. We might have to bushwhack slightly to get to the riverbed, but that's okay. I feel like this will be going to the right spot. This is the same area where we saw that really cool cave in a video about a month ago. A lot of cool rock formations, but this one piece of petrified tree doesn't look like anything else. It just is heavy and it visually even looks like a piece of iron. Okay, good. The trail seems to be opening up quite a lot in the right direction. All right, we just went down what looks like a trail. And if we turn, it kind of just died. But we are parallel with the dried up riverbed that we're going to. We have to start going this way. And I don't think it's very far. I think it's literally a minute or two. Thankfully, there's no pricker bushes and everything. Here's a big gully. I don't think this is the riverbed. I think we gotta go down this, up that next hill, and then it's right there, the river. This is probably an old piece of the riverbed, maybe way back in the day, thousands of years when glaciers were going through here. This was likely raging water, but it doesn't look like recently there's been any water down in here. So we gotta go up this next little hill. All right, going up this next little hill. It's so easy to walk around in these forests, which are older growth. It's just wide open. But right here next to the river, there's bushes and all kinds of stuff everywhere. Pricker bushes, it's considerably harder to walk through. But looking at the map, we just gotta walk through these pricker bushes or whatever this is for a couple of minutes and we should be there. Just try to step on all the pricker bushes and knock them down. Trees that are next to rivers will often grow thorns more than in the middle of the woods because as the river keeps flooding and knocking them down and breaking branches off, they think something is eating them. So naturally they'll grow more thorns and become a meaner plant. Okay, I see the riverbed now. We just gotta, actually the majority of what we have right here is dead, but there's prickers mixed into it. See, very thorny. 
I'm trying to just crush those ones down. Yeah, there's thorns on all of these trees. So I'm trying to just smash them down. Uh, getting some stuck to my upper body too. It's a pretty warm day for October, but a jacket would have helped a bit. Ouch, right in the face, perker bush. Ouch. And, okay, there's the riverbed, but how are we gonna get down there? It looks like a sheer drop. It's definitely not, the, ouch, the way to bring this heavy thing back. I don't even think we can get down this spot, so we gotta go back. So this is all pricker bush land. Now we're back into the clear areas. And we're gonna walk further down and try to meet up with the river somewhere else. Cause it doesn't show this on Google Maps where the pricker bushes necessarily are. So now there's all the pricker bushes. It seems to just end right around here. So this might be a spot to try to re-enter the riverbed. And hopefully there's not a sheer drop again. But there's a dark cedar forest here, which will be easy to walk through if we have to continue looking for a spot to get to the river. We also gotta be careful because there's entrances to caves all over the place. There's also porcupines all over this forest that we realized last time. They love it here. So there's the riverbed, but there's a good amount of prickers, but at least it's not as steep. We're improving a little bit into the dark cedar forest we go now as we still try to find a way to approach the riverbed. Oh, perfect. A nice easy way in. This will make life a bit easier. This is a pretty gradual way to get a big rock like that out. If we can't find a good piece of driftwood to make a stretcher, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut a little section of tree out of somewhere with a handsaw. Now that rock is somewhere down here. I know I left it high up so I could grab it. I'm pretty sure it's down here a little bit. So we're gonna either have to backtrack slightly with the rock Unfortunately, I moved it a few hundred feet last time and I probably shouldn't have. The riverbed's even more dried up than last time. But we gotta go ahead and find that really cool rock. Maybe we don't have to backtrack. Maybe now that we're down here, we'll find and visually see an easier way to get back up. Water has dropped even further. When we were last out here, I was talking about how cool this would be to go camping on. Look at this flat rock right underneath this natural roof. But those stone tables are very thin. It'd be kind of scary sleeping underneath that platform. Imagine if that rock just broke. It would be most likely to break during the spring thaw when there's ice that expanded. Breaking the rock is now coming apart. So... The rock is somewhere around here. I know I left it in a high spot. So right here is where we approached earlier. See all the pricker bushes? Then there's just like a maybe eight foot cliff. Not too much, but pricker bushes top and bottom of it. You don't want to accidentally fall there. And I remember last time I went through here instead of here because it was tons of slippery grapevines and I don't want to fall with a giant heavy rock in my hands. I think you were right. I okay, we do see it up there. I think I think that's our rock right there. I think that's where I gave up with it because the way we usually come in, we have to go over a boulder pile where things shift around quite often. Even these rocks, look. They're shifting around and you don't want to accidentally drop something that heavy. Is this our rock? Um it's got to be. How else would it have got up here? Yes, it is. It just died a bit. The moss, it was greener last time. See, but this is a very beautiful rock or tree fossil, everyone's telling me it is. If we flip it over very carefully, this thing's very heavy for its size because, look, it looks very 
ironish. It kind of looks like a brain, but everyone was telling me in my comment section, this is probably a petrified piece of wood, but it's very solid. It feels like a piece of steel. It's even visually rusty and irony. So we're going to try to get this thing out here today. So we're going to cut some sort of tree section to get it out of here. I don't see any maple, which would be best. Actually, I do. Maybe we can find a branch and cut a branch out of it. All right, everyone, we left the rock where it is with our stuff. We're just exploring how to get out. No, I didn't move it for no reason. The cliff actually ends. We didn't notice that on the way in. This is how we usually get out. This area, the boulder field where they kind of shift. We don't want to go through there with that weight. Here actually looks perfect, which goes back to the trail. So we're just going to walk it a little bit and map out where we're going to bring this heavy thing once we ratchet strap it to a piece of wood and also now that we're here back into the woods we're going to find a nice piece of wood that'll help us move it this tree right here is very straight do we think think it has enough strength to pick up that rock or maybe go for a little thicker we gotta that might work we gotta find a tree so right here is that other little river bed I said probably doesn't look like it's flown in a while or flowed in a while, but this looks like a good way out. Very promising. Let's look up over this hill and see what we got. Yeah, we'll definitely find our way out of here back to the trail. Very open woods, easy to walk. All right, everyone. So we have this tree here we think is the right we think it'll be good to grip onto. We think it'll be strong enough. And when that's out of here, it'll give a little bit more canopy space to the others. Because if you look around, there's a lot of little trees about the same size which have died. There's just not enough space for them all to grow. So, it's okay. I'll take this one out of here. Have a nice piece of lumber. Alright everyone. Let's see how easy this is to cut. I'm used to just dealing with softwoods. My whole property is only softwoods. I don't know what this tree is exactly. I don't have any of whatever this is. Oh, it cuts good. That was easy. So we can always make it shorter when we get it back, but I'm gonna cut it at what I think is about eight feet is probably good for now. We don't even have to time lapse that. That was so easy. What kind of tree is this? Can anyone in the comments tell me? It's already very light, which is a good sign. It also feels very strong. So what I'm noticing when counting the rings, this tree here was about 28, 30 years old. And what I'm noticing is, see, in recent years, it grew a bit faster. But when it was a baby, the first decade of its life, look how tight the rings are. It had a bit of trouble. And I believe that's because when it was young, none of these other trees were here. It had a lot of sunlight. And because it was a lot of sun, it was always dry. It couldn't really grow. It also probably had competition. There was probably a lot of other trees right next to it, which died. This tree was one of the lucky ones that didn't die until now. Now these other trees are going to love that this one's gone. All right, everyone. We're heading back. All right, everyone, we got the piece of wood back. Now we have a burlap sack. We're gonna try to wrap around the rock. Now we have a bag here, which I don't know if it'll be able to hold it, but we're gonna try to get the big rock into the bag a bit. holding but can we 
trust these. Let's see. It'll help. I think it'll help along with the ratchet straps. All right, everyone, we got this thing rigged up. I'm gonna show you how we pick it up, and this is how we're gonna get it out of here. When I first started YouTube, I didn't even use tripods or anything, so I had to do things like this, lean it against a rock or something to show everyone. Okay, good. All right, so I'd say that's a 60, 80 pound rock. Now, we each take about half the load, and that's super, tight now two ratchet straps this was the perfect piece of wood and we have a couple little fail safes that should stop it from rolling onto our feet if it were to fall but it seems pretty good I don't think we're gonna drop it so now we have about a mile and a half walk back to the car and we only have to move it literally three four hundred feet until we get to the wide open woods then it's smooth sailing from there it's just hard to get it out of the riverbed. So here's a close-up look. Super tight, both ratchet straps. And we have it in that bag. Nice. This is gonna look super suspicious if anyone walks across us, but there's no one out here. It's super rural and we're parked on a dirt road in the middle of the wilderness. All right, everyone. There's the little tree stump down there where we got this tree from. And I'd say we have already moved it maybe five, 600 feet, a lot better than last time. I just picked this thing up in my arms and I was, felt like I was gonna break my back just moving it a little bit, but this is a good workout. And we still have over another mile, but now that we got it up here on this hill, the rest of the mile is basically flat through the open woods. And we gotta go find that hiking trail that we walked in on. I think it's only a couple minute walk, but we should figure out what direction it is now to avoid any of these unnecessary dips in the woods. All right, everyone, we shoved it in the back of the car. Now let's get it back and pressure wash it. Awesome. All right, everyone. Now that we got it back, we have to take all these straps off it and pressure wash it. Before we pressure wash it, we want to put it on a scale and see how much this exactly weighed. Actually, we should put it on the scale now before we take any of the weight off it to see what we, the wood and everything, see how heavy everything we just had to carry a mile and a half through the woods actually weighs. All right, everyone, here's the scale. All right, it's still working properly, even though it's on this thing, because I knew it wouldn't work properly on the grass. I'm gonna see if I can pick this up myself and see if I can cut the difference out of my weight. Whoa, thing's heavy. All right, let's see. All right, I weigh 190 and that is 300 pounds. So let's do that math. That weighs a lot more than I expected it to. The stick, the ratchet straps, and the rock is 110 pounds. So that rock, it's probably safe to say it's about 95 or 100 pounds itself. Cause that fresh piece of wood is probably a good 10, 15 pounds. So that thing is more than we thought, definitely. Even moving it myself is a lot easier having this log attached to it. It's a good handle. So now I gotta 
try to release everything on here. All right, everyone, that rock is looking pretty cool, but the other side of it's completely covered in moss, so we gotta pressure wash it now. This is cute. The cat's playing with the water, keeps pawing at it, trying to lick it. Here's what the other side of the rock looks like. So everyone was telling me that this is a piece of petrified wood, a couple said it was a meteoroid, but it's different. It doesn't look like any other rocks at that river. So we're gonna go ahead and pressure wash it now to see what it looks like when we get it all off. Is there a primer on it? Not powerful enough, we're gonna put another one in. everyone that thing is starting to look pretty cool let's go take a look at it all right everyone now that we got all the moss off it it is a multicolored rock i think it's a couple different types of rock mixed together i think we can rule out that it's a piece of wood i don't know though here's what i'm thinking why it's not a piece of wood you see parts of it clean up parts of the rock are this bluish gray parts of it are this blackish color and that does not clean off. It's just a ton of iron. But parts of it clean off pretty well. I don't know if this would keep flaking away or not. If that's just some residue on the top of it. But underneath most of the moss, we found this cleaner color rock. I'm just thinking it's a bit multicolored there. We're going to go let it sit in the sun. Now, this doesn't get any cleaner. I pressure washed this thing many times longer than I had to. Some spots, if you touch it, there's still mud caked in there, like right here. See how it's still kind of dirty in there? I tried to get as much as I could without possibly damaging the rock. So, does everyone still think it's a piece of wood? It's possible. I looked at pictures of pressure, I mean, petrified wood, and some of them looked absolutely crazy. Now, here's the other side of it. That still looks very irony. Not, not didn't really change at all with the pressure washing so we're gonna go 
place it in the sun and we'll check in on it in a couple of hours once it dries and see how it looks from there. And when it dries, maybe we can also weigh it again. Although I don't think that took more than a few pounds of moss off it. It's still a very heavy rock. All right, everyone, this thing is still super heavy. And yeah, this thing probably weighs about 100 pounds itself. We're going to put it here in the sun and let it dry. And then we'll come take a look at it in a couple of hours. Trying to stand it up in a way where the sun can hit as much of it as possible. Oh, it actually staying pretty good now. It looks weird, but it's well balanced. We'll check back once it dries. It's warm enough today to dry it out. It's interesting. It looks like a brain, kind of like a meteoroid. All right, everyone. This thing's been sitting in the sun about an hour or so. It appears to be mostly dry. It's really cool looking. Look at that. It's pretty colorful. It's got the dark areas that look just like iron or rust. It's got the deeper crevices where we sprayed the moss out of. Kind of looks bluish gray. There's these brown areas that seem like very... Um, at first it was kind of muddy underneath the moss, but what's left over, if we kept pressure washing it, it would come apart more and more, but I'm not quite sure that's a good thing. It looks like sandstone, basically. Yeah, it feels like mortar between bricks, and the power washer can kind of destroy that. Here's the back side of it. Seems to be still that solid color. The little bit of scrapes will come right off, just like when you do excavation work. The scrapes on the rocks from heavy equipment eventually go away but this thing is starting to look really cool so it's just about 100 pounds with everything it was 110 so i think it's just about 100 on the spot this part right here seems to be a bit broken but that seems to have been broken before we even got our hands on it and you see even in the broken spot it's kind of pretty see that a couple tone so i think part of this is sandstone whole thing might be sandstone, but this is more more irony. It looks really cool as a garden ornament, doesn't it? Kind of looks like a brain or a meteoroid. Could this thing possibly be petrified wood like people suggested in my comments? I'm not sure. I don't see anything that looks exactly like it on the internet. Things that look similar, but not quite like it. So leave in the comments what you think, and I hope this video of getting it out of the woods was interesting, everybody. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.